What's up y'all? Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the Far Driver Indy 72530. I'm going to be unboxing it, going through all the wiring, and then I'll also do a basic test of it uh, with my motor hooked up. So I want to prove that this controller works and um, don't want to go through all the effort of putting it in my bike before I make sure that this is a good controller. Previously, I had my bike running on a Sabaton uh, 72 200 amp controller and it blew uh, one of the sets of phase MOSFETs on here. And unfortunately, I do not have the skill to replace these, so I went ahead and replaced the controller with this fire driver. I've had a lot of problems with Sabaton, so I decided to go with something new. Um, hopefully it'll work better. This Sabaton actually worked for about two weeks, and then one day I was just trying to learn some wheelies with it, and it popped and didn't work anymore. So I found someone selling this locally, and uh, they had never used it, so this is basically just an open box. So I'm going to go ahead and unbox it. And then I'll show what the wiring does and we'll take it outside and hook it up to the battery and motor and give it an auto learn. So this is the green version. This is the 72530 controller and that means that it is 530 phase amps. They rate their controllers in phase amps um, in the name. Sabaton does it in direct current amps. But yeah, this is going to be 530 phase amps and I think 350 amps of DC current. And it is IP67 waterproof, or at least they claim it is. Um, and these will only run you about 230 240 bucks from China. I mean with shipping it's gonna be about 300 But that's pretty good compared to like some of the other uh, motor controller brands These controllers come with a auto learn feature Which is something that these sabatons do not have so when you hook this up to your motor You'll actually just be able to click a button and it's got to spin the motor forwards and backwards and figure out exactly uh, What the specs of that motor are and configure itself for that motor, which is pretty cool The sabatons do not do that. They have a hall sensor test and determines the hull angle, but other than that, uh, it's not an intelligent controller, which they claim that this is. This also does support flux weakening, like these Sabatons. I think the settings for it are completely different, but it does support that feature. You can see these things have an absolutely massive heat sink, which I'm pretty excited about, because the Sabatons seem to be lacking that, and mine did get a little warm. Uh, to do a direct comparison of this controller with a Sabaton, this is a Sabaton um, outer casing, and this is the far driver controller. So much shorter, and it is about the same thickness. Um, yeah, it's about the same. It's pretty much exactly the same thickness. So if you're ever wondering, the only thing that's different really is that these terminals are all on the top. So like I had my Sabaton underneath my Stealth Bomber frame, and that's not going to work for this because the cables won't reach all the way onto this. And I don't want them there because they're going to get dirt and stuff on them. So I'm going to try to put this inside the frame or maybe mount it underneath the seat. We're gonna see how that goes. So you should just get the controller itself and then your wiring harness, which should include this Bluetooth module. Uh, may or may not be attached uh, when it comes out of the box, but this is how you will set up all the settings. One of the downsides of this controller is it is not nearly as user-friendly as the Sabatons are. The programming is a little bit more um, in-depth from what I've seen. But I'm not really scared of that because more parameters means I can have more fun with it. So, so going along to the wiring, um, I think I remember what most of these do. So I'll just go ahead and walk through it, and then I'll go through it again when we take it outside and actually wire it up. But first, you're going to have your hall sensor connector. Um, this will connect to the hall sensor on your motor. This controller is compatible with mid drive and hub drive motors. So I have this hall sensor. You'll have your ignition wire here. So this will go to your battery positive, and in the middle will be your switch. You have your Bluetooth module like I just discussed. This three prong connector will be your throttle connector. And uh, I have these tied up because I'm not going to be using them. But basically what these are is reverse, alarm lock, the display line. I'm not going to be using a display. And um, there is also the high brake line on this. And then you'll have your three speed switch. So if you plug in this little jumper, it's going to be high speed by default. If you, if you plug this into an actual three-speed switch, then you can have the three speeds. I think you can also program in the software for it to just pick one by default, even if you don't have this jumper on here. And then finally, this is going to be the low brake. So I'm going to connect this to the front brake on my bike, so that when I pull the front brake, it engine brakes the back brake. But I still have uh, no engine cutoff on my back brake for wheelies. So yeah, that's basically all of the wiring. Now I'm going to take it outside, and um, I'll actually wire it up with the battery, and we'll... All right guys, now we're down in the garage and this is the bike we're going to be putting this controller on. This is my Stealth Bomber clone with a QS205 V3 3.5T hub motor. Um, previously I did have the Sabaton on here along with this 72 volt battery, but like I said, that Sabaton blew MOSFETs. So we're going to be putting the fire driver on this bike. I have my battery over here and always have a fire extinguisher on hand when doing stuff like this. You just never know what might happen. 
But um, yeah, I'm gonna connect the controller and have everything on the ground here, and then I'll show you what that looks like, and then we'll do the auto learn. All right, so here we have the controller mocked up on the ground. We have the phase wires connected, hall signal connected, battery negative and battery positive. And then we also have the throttle because that's needed for the auto learn and then um, the switch. So this will key on the controller with uh, 72 volts from our battery here. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the battery to the controller and then I'm gonna turn on the uh, MOSFETs and hopefully turn this on. Once you have powered your controller on, you should be able to open the app and go to this page. You'll be able to click scan and then the device will show up. Uh, the next thing I did was is I went to the other page and I went to the configuration and turned my max current down and my max phase current down. That way the wheel wouldn't spin super fast when I do the auto learn. Now to the auto learn, you just toggle over to this page and click auto learn. The controller will do the three beep tone where it'll go beep, beep, beep. And when it starts doing that, pull the throttle fully and hold it. And it's kind of scary with the hub motor because the whole wheel starts spinning and in my video you can see how unbalanced my motor is. So after doing that process the wheel will stop spinning and you will hear a controller beep twice and that will confirm that it has saved all of the um, things that it has learned about the motor from doing that auto learn. So now you should be ready to ride the bike but there's a lot of uh, further setup you can do in the firmware. So once I get the controller in the bike in the next part I will go through tuning it on the road.